Um, I, I think it's 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 the opportunity to 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 deal and address um, you know groups that are that are living with the. Uh, uh, the economic and social drivers of vulnerability, and uh, the sustainable development goals uh, and the, the you know the priorities that have been set around the climate change agenda uh, presents, for instance, an opportunity to deal with the drivers of uh, 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 women's uh, uh, vulnerability. In this case, um, what undermines uh, women's uh, economic empowerment? And when we look at the links with uh, the environment uh, uh, goals, uh, promoting sustainable man management of ecosystems and uh, you know, dealing with uh, combating land degradation, um, this is uh, an important goal that if addressed would uh, contribute to women uh, farmers, small-scale farmers enhancing their food security. The opportunities that uh, the you know the green growth development path uh, present for um, uh, informal traders and for women in uh, small enterprises are quite immense, right? Uh, if we look at the transition uh, towards uh, clean energy as an example, and if I was to look at uh, what could possibly happen at the practical level, taking a country like Malawi, for instance, right, where uh, women in small farming uh, communities as a way of uh, augmenting their income are involved in selling charcoal, uh, uh, um, you know, are involved in uh, selling charcoal in the informal sector in order to build and bring income to their households. Uh, could, could they be a potential for us looking at how the uh, substitute the sale for charcoal with the sale for clean cooking technology, as an example. Um, beyond just making that technology available for their use at the household level, is there an opportunity to look at a woman who's been involved in the sale of uh, uh, energy products for household income to be involved in the trade of the uh, technology that is being made available? The, the sale of solar panels, as an example, uh, clean, uh, ki uh, you know, cooking stoves, and 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 so forth. So I think they they they, they, they there is an opportunity in terms of the thinking around alternatives that are being put on the table. You know, practical alternatives to technology. But we really have to have a conversation around. Um, who should have access to this technology and who should be benefiting from these opportunities that are, that are being made available? And how do they access information around that? How do we deal with challenges that we already know uh, hinder uh, women uh, progressing uh, from their small businesses to maybe medium enterprise businesses? The questions that we've been grappling with around access to finance. Is there an opportunity for us to have new conversations around the type of finance that is being made available and the avenues that are being created for women uh, uh, cooperatives, for individual entrepreneurs to tap into uh, the funding that is being made available? Um, the, the, the other uh, practical uh, opportunities that I see uh, uh, around this is also the 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 spirit around uh, and the commitment towards civic participation in the formulation and the implementation of the SDGs. Is there a potential to provide spaces where the informal traders coalitions, where the women who are involved in small businesses can actually be part of the process that, that is shaping the national agenda beyond what has already happened at the at the global level. So we really have to be looking at uh, uh, you know, the, the, the organizations and the networks that some of the women have gone about setting up and inviting them to come, to come to the table. And I don't see this happening if the discussions around climate change, if the discussions around implementing the goals, the environmental goals within the sustainable development uh, 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 goal agenda are really just happening in the environment circles. 
I think we need to uh, invest in connecting stakeholders. We need to in invest in connecting networks. And in this case, I would make a, a really strong case for looking at how we shift the discussions from think tanks, from intermediary uh, uh, NGOs, to bring in social movements into the discourse. There was also um, some interesting insights that are coming up, that if we're looking at uh, green growth uh, contributing to poverty reduction and contributing to promoting sustainable uh, management of the environment or the protection of the environment, we really need to have a conversation around the quality of uh, jobs that uh, is being delivered as part of this agenda. Uh, we are really quite accustomed to the, the job uh, discussions in the environment sector being around uh, recycling uh, and we have to look at the sites where this recycling is, is taking place and the, the kind of uh, health provisions that are being made, that, that are being taken into, into account in, in those contexts. Um, the, the other thing that I, I think is an opportunity to really um, redress uh, some of the uh, historical injustices is really taking seriously the question of equitable benefit sharing. Um, we were just looking at statistics for Namibia, uh, for instance, uh, as we were preparing for, for this conference and looking at um, the, the benefits that communities who are involved in developing uh, and selling natural products um, gain through the, the value chain. And we're quite surprised to realize that on average, what stays within the community that is involved in the production is between 2 and 3%. Now, if we're looking to uh, contributing to incomes and contributing to job and growth, local economic development, surely those kinds of ratios are not sustainable. And they are, that's not a fair way of, uh, of doing business and, and it, will, it will not contribute much to, to poverty reduction. So we have to look at the opportunities and the means through which communities can benefit and derive benefits throughout the, the value chains from production going all the way to the to the markets. The, the last thing that I would add is uh, again a serious reflection around how we connect communities that are involved in the uh, natural products to the markets beyond the local the local markets. How do we use uh, uh, access to information tools? to make sure that they respond to uh, raising awareness and building knowledge around where the markets are and what the demands are in the market outside the, the locality so that you can support the process of growing businesses at a, at a local level. And I think that taking this forward really, uh, it's an integrated approach that requires uh, multiple stakeholders to collaborate and work closely together. How do you identify private sector that is in, interested in the kinds of social impact investments that you need in order to deliver uh, benefits uh, for those who are poor and operating at a local level and those who may be uh, big businesses that are operating at uh, different scales beyond just that locality. Well, I mean, the, 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 there is, um, uh, you know, the Open Society uh, uh, Foundations has uh, launched a new program on um, uh, food security in the context of climate change in Africa. And uh, through that work, uh, there is a lot of work uh, working with uh, grantees on the ground in different countries, in Liberia and Sierra Leone, in Zambia, Mozambique and, and Cameroon as an example. Uh, where there, are, there is an initiative to work with civil society and small-scale farmers on the ground uh, and marginalized groups to uh, set up uh, uh, advocacy platforms that are informing uh, the land reform processes and making a stronger case for strengthening community rights to, to land and community access to uh, productive assets, as well as making a case for investments on the part of uh, 
governments that are supporting uh, uh, agricultural production among small-scale farmers. That is just one um, area of work that is relevant and could pot potentially accompany the process of implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. On the side of working with the, with informal, uh, the informal sector, uh, the Open Society Initiative of Southern Africa has been working with a network of uh, uh, informal traders in the, in the region. And one of the things that we've been doing over the last four years is to uh, support them in setting up an advocacy platform where they're engaging uh, with the Southern Africa development uh, uh, community uh, to look at uh, uh, policy reforms, uh, that govern uh, the movement of goods and people uh, between the, 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 the southern countries um, in order to support or provide an enabling environment for cross-border traders. Um, because for, for, for the informal traders to have access to wider markets, these markets need to go beyond the countries that they are uh, operating in. And most of the informal traders are in any case involved in moving goods, say, between Zimbabwe and Botswana, or between Zimbabwe and South Africa, and Mozambique, South Africa, vice versa. So it's important to have, uh, 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 to remove the barriers that, that may undermine the growth of, of, of uh, that sector of the, of the, of the economy. Uh, at a national level, it's also important to look at that. And uh, within Swaziland, as an example, we have been working with a coalition of informal traders that has been looking to influence the formulation of bylaws and just also just providing a platform for informal traders to come together uh, to, uh, for purposes of advocacy and amplifying their voice so that they're more visible uh, when they look at making a case for the contribution of the informal sector in the economy, but also uh, having very specific policy asks around how you uh, change the bylaws that may be prohibitive uh, to be more enabling, how you begin to uh, introduce uh, discussions around tax reform that may not be regressive and, and punitive towards informal traders. Just that ability for uh, the informal traders to connect with other individuals who are involved in, in this sector. Because uh, you know, most of these are very small, family-run, individual-run businesses. But for you to be in a position to make a convincing case for uh, policy changes, you really do need that mass mobilization and to have that collective voice with a common vision that you can clearly um, communicate to the policymakers. So these are just uh, some, some of the small programs that we've been, we've been working in where there's an opportunity to actually even begin to introduce the new issues that may be coming up or new opportunities that are coming up uh, within the, the SDGs. Um, it would be uh, progressive if the discussions around green growth and the opportunities for that can actually begin to permeate these spaces. Uh, so far, what we have seen, if I was to take uh, South Africa as, a, as an example, or even Zambia, is that the green growth uh, strategies are being developed by technocrats within government with the support of UN agencies. But the involvement of uh, uh, local communities, particularly around uh, what those op the opportunities could be, for enterprises, for businesses, what the opportunities are for local communities themselves to um, uh, adapt and mitigate the impacts of climate change are yet to happen. And, and I think that these, these spaces that civil society organizations have um, set up around their different interest groups do provide an avenue for some of these progressive discussions to take place.